Kentucky May. I'm Kate LaRue. And I'm Seth Fitzsimmons. And we're here to talk to you about a project that we did together. Um, all three of us are part of the... Um, uh, I'll, I'll, the I'll yeah, <laughs> we, we all played a part in the 20 year history that Stamen Design has collectively had in designing maps and data visualizations. Um, and we're here to talk to you today about how we approach designing the base map based on OSM data from op designing a base map based on OSM data from opposite sides of the fence. Um, Seth on the AWS side and Kate and I on the Stamen side. Um, so, oh, so, so sorry, oh, skip the slide. Skip the slide. Um, so this past year, we partnered with AWS to design four map styles that are instant classics. We do say so ourselves. Um, the data will look familiar to you. It looks familiar to us because it came from OSM. But the strategy we deployed uh, is something that we think is worth talking about a little bit more. Um, the TLDR in our message here today is that maps work better if they have the, if the if they have a purpose that is reflected in the design. Um, using OSM data purposefully and selectively requires understanding deeply both the data and the map you're what you're, the map you're creating is to be used for. Um, being purposeful with um, maps with OSM data, um, we believe shows them in the best light. Shows OSM the OSM community in the best light. Um, this may not necessarily be intuitive for a lot of folks, a lot of mappers. Uh, we come here and we, we talk a lot about um, the importance of building the map, and a lot of map editing is geared towards completeness and just, you know, building out the data, building out the data. So the your 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 natural knee-jerk intuition may be that you want to just see all of that great data reflected on the map, and the more the better. Um, so we appreciate you being here and considering with us um, for a moment that um, showcasing the power of OSM uh, may be achieved by by through some more selective means. Do I really know how these controls work, don't I? Um, so in the top, the two maps on the top here are the reference styles that we created for, for AWS, um, suitable for placing point locations. And the two maps on the bottom are the data viz map styles that we created for AWS, suitable for overlaying more complex data um, as in a thematic map. Uh, Kate's here to tell you a, a bunch more about how we created these map styles, but first here's Seth to tell you about the design brief that AWS gave us. Thanks. Um, so AWS launched Amazon Location Service about two years ago, and we included map styles from both Esri and Pure that were provided and designed by uh, those partners. So at a certain point, sorry. <laughs> um, so we wanted to provide some additional choice uh, to our customers because that was that's one of the value propositions that we bring there. Uh, we saw an opportunity to create some first party styles that where we could develop a design system and uh, provide a foundation for future work. So we wanted to highlight the opportunity that open data provides to a wider audience. Uh, in this case, the open data is OSM. Um, and as a longtime member of the OSM community, I was particularly excited about this, uh, especially being able to pull statement into the fold to work on this project. Um, we gave them a particularly tricky design brief which was build us styles that can be used for anything and everything. It's kind of like the Google Maps for everything. And in this case, we don't, we aren't the end users of those maps. Um, the end users of those maps are AWS customers. So they could be doing pretty much anything. They could be migrating from Google. They could be doing a new things off the shelf. So Stamen challenged us to, to refine that request. Um, and it ultimately led to a discussion of what de facto map design standards have become over the last 20 years of slippy maps. Um, so it's about something, it's about creating something classic uh, and unobtrusive that highlights customer data and experiences versus something that's distinctly recognizable, something like a snap where you look at it, you know, this is snap. Um, so these styles are for AWS customers. They're not for AWS itself. But we still wanted to be able to combine the ability to blend it in with whatever brands happen to be using it, and then include some subtle callbacks to the AWS branding so that people could know where they came from if they were looking. Um, yeah, so it, so for an opportunity for awareness for AWS, but also for uh, Instagram. I'm going to pass it over to Kate to talk a bit about the process. All right. Thank you, Stephanie and Seth. This project gave us a challenge that could be described as designing maps for everyone, everywhere, all at once. Um, harnessing OSM as the data source, we wanted the map styles to be globally usable, balanced, and timeless. This carefully de designed map, which is OSM Cardo, of course, is an everything bagel. It aims to show off everything that OSM has to offer. It's not as well suited to be the base map for an AWS customer. 
um, where they want to highlight their own data on top of the base map, things like weather patterns or star locations or outage trends or heat maps. And around these maps, there will be layers and surrounding UI, which also make a complex base map less functional. And customers also want the app to support or the map to support the aesthetics of their own website or app. So the map colors need to be muted. So our approach was to turn down the volume on OSM in a few important ways. Um, first and foremost, our, cartogra our cartographic process always begins by thinking about the users of the maps, who they are and what they need from their map styles. So we pressed the AWS team for their thoughts on likely customer use cases so that we could get a little more concrete. So this led us to turn down the volume by dropping some map style concepts and focusing on two main categories, reference maps and thematic maps. And then we tested our map styles along the way, creating mockups of potential use cases. Uh, to the left, our light reference style provides just enough context for retail point locations, allowing the point icons to be front and center. And on the right, our light data viz, di, light data viz style uses a small part of the color and contrast space, which leaves the rest for a vibrant data set. Uh, with map styles that we know are going to be added to a dashboard or have numerous layers on top, we have to consider as cartographers what layers and features are crucial to the users we design for. We spend a lot of time discussing things like the balance of the features required as part of the reference map on the right versus the data visualization style in the center, which has somewhat fewer features and labor labels. And how does that change at different zoom levels? When does it make sense to show the marvelous detail of OSM? The answers to this became an important part of the design of these maps. When we look at a map, we have to process geographic information very quickly. It's a subconscious process that needs to be supported by the map design. For map styles to be functional, they must be quickly legible at any scale. Increasing legibility using information hierarchy is a good way to make this easier for users. So we have to design with everything everywhere all at once in mind and create an intentional hierarchy for labels that works everywhere globally at every Zoom level. When we first applied our map styles to the OSM tiles created by AWS, the maps looked pretty good. You can see how it looked initially there on the top row. But then we took time to discover more ways that we could turn down the volume using cartographic styling that increased legibility and reduced visual noise. So in the first example on the left, we reduced the clutter of smaller roads by leaving them out until higher zooms and made road classes narrower overall. We also used a different color for primary roads to make the hierarchy more clear. In the center, uh, we're looking at place labels here. We refined the classification so there aren't so many labels dis uh, displayed at these medium zoom levels, kind of turned down the volume there. We also made them somewhat lighter. And then on the right, we switched to using white for most road classes in the light styles, which allowed them to stay more in the background. It's just a few examples of the way we used cartography to turn down the volume. After implementing this approach, we were able to deliver four beautiful, quiet map styles capable of supporting a wide range of customer applications. Uh, I also want to be sure to give credit to Kelsey Taylor and Katie Kowalski, who worked on this project with me and couldn't be here today. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be among our people and talk about how we harness the power of OSM.